Hey viewers, I am back with um, a video that I've been thinking about making for a while, but have kind of held back on because I've been a little worried that it's just going to sound like a ramble. Um, but essentially, what I want the vibe of this message to be is just to encourage women who are facing pelvic organ prolapse repair surgery and their various options for that to um, really do some soul searching, get um, potentially a second opinion, and just really do their own research before jumping into um, that surgery involving a hysterectomy. So basically this is going to be about um, reconsidering a hysterectomy as a way to repair your pelvic organ prolapses. So if you have followed my channel for some time, you know that at the age of 37, I delivered my last baby and a few months later had third degree pelvic organ prolapses. And, um, you know, you can go back and look at some of my other videos for a description of all of that, but pretty much all of my female organs were prolapsed and, um, my surgeon, who is a very well-known, um, very trusted surgeon, um, not just in my area, but honestly, he is a world-renowned surgeon for pelvic, or pelvic organ prolapse repair as well as other vaginal surgeries. His suggestion for me was that a hysterectomy as well as some native tissue repairs, some pretty extensive ones, were the best way to treat my prolapse as well as prevent prolapses from coming back and me needing repeat surgeries in the future. So, um, honestly, I struggled a little bit with the emotional aspect of the hysterectomy because I had a three-month-old baby. I was postpartum. I was, um, you know, just in that emotional, like, this is my last baby phase. We were, I would say, 99% sure we were done having babies, but still the prospect of a hysterectomy was emotional for me. What I did not do was enough of my own research on the potential implications of that. So at 37, he said, we are going to leave your ovaries intact. That's going to prevent you from entering menopause too early. You know, there should be no effect to your hormones. Everything should be the same. So in hearing that, I felt pretty confident with proceeding forward with the hysterectomy from a medical standpoint, from a health standpoint, that it made sense that by removing the um, uterus, the cervix, the fallopian tubes, um, all of those things that that was going to, obviously, if there are left, less organs in that region, then there are less organs that can potentially prolapse as well as um, be putting pressure on the other organs such as your bladder and therefore preventing the risk of reprolapse. So I really didn't do much research beyond that and I proceeded with the hysterectomy despite being um, rather emotionally distraught about it the morning of the surgery. Well again, if you've watched any of my videos since my surgery, which was about um, two and three quarters years ago, it's going to be three years in um, about three months. I um, have struggled hormonally and at this point am pretty much in full-blown ovarian failure. Um, my ovaries are not doing what they're supposed to do anymore. They are not producing the hormones that they are supposed to at the levels that they should. And um, truth be told, at this point, I'm pretty much considered um, menopausal. So I'm 39 going through menopause. Um, Average age for menopause for most women in the U.S. is 52. So um, this is well before I should be entering menopause, but my ovaries are not doing what they should anymore. So I am um, on a full hormone replacement therapy regimen. I take progesterone in the form of a pill at night before bed, and then I have a compounded bioidentical um hormone lotion that includes estrogen, testosterone, and DHEA. Um, so I'm on the path to being treated for this. I am doing the best thing for my health, um, not only now to make me feel better and be able to manage life of menopause with a 5, 3, and 15 year old at home, um, but also for preventing those long-term complications of early hysterectomy, 
um, causing early menopause, which are the three major ones, um, early onset dementia or just and dementia in general, um, osteoporosis, you know, loss of bone, like literally your bones start to just completely, um, wither away. Um, it's not just about bone density. It is literally loss of bone. And then the other one uh, for women is heart disease, um, heart attack, strokes, things like that. Um, not so much strokes related to the heart disease, but it is another risk. Um, primary one being women having heart attack. So those three major risks were not discussed with me at all. Number one, there was no discussion of the fact that a certain percentage, I've read about 15% of women go into ovarian failure within 18 months of having a hysterectomy despite the ovaries being left intact. That was not shared with me. Next, it was not shared with me that even if you don't necessarily go into ovarian failure early as I did, that simply from having the ovaries, rem uh, I'm sorry, having the hysterectomy, despite ovaries being left intact, you are at a greater risk of those three major things, osteoporosis, heart attack, and dementia. Um, had I been counseled on those risks, I'm not sure how I would have proceeded. I think there was enough pressure from the medical, physical side of things that I likely would have still gone through with the hysterectomy because I was being told that was best for me. Um, especially as a young mom with little kids and doing a lot of lifting and being very active, you know, it was kind of said like, this is the best way to keep you off of the operating table again. However, if somebody would have told me that within 18 months, I was going to be on a full-blown hormone regimen because my ovaries were going to shut down. I was going to be in menopause with toddler and preschooler at home. Um, if someone would have told me all of the absolutely awful effects of this ovarian failure and menopause symptoms that I was going to be going through so quickly, um, I, I don't know. Like it would have been a much bigger decision to make than it was because these menopause symptoms have been absolutely terrible. You can watch, I have two videos about hormone replacement therapy and I talk about brain fog, irritability, inability to sleep, um, skin dryness. Like, I don't know. You can even probably look at some of my videos I originally started making, like right after my hysterectomy and repairs. And I didn't look so like dry and wrinkly and just old. My skin has completely changed in the last two and a half years. Um, the overall body aches. I felt like I was 80 something years old. Every joint in my body hurt until I was put on, you know, increased levels of estrogen. And it's just been a complete roller coaster ride with these symptoms and then side effects and then trying to find the right dosage of estrogen, testosterone, you know, counteracting those and what is the right amount. And it's really hard when you have had a hysterectomy and you don't have cycles anymore. So you don't know what part of your cycle you're in when they are drawing blood work, which is a very small piece of the um, dosing puzzle anyway. It's really symptoms-based diagnostics and dosing. So um, I guess my advice would just be if you are prior to 40, probably prior to 45, and you are being encouraged to have a hysterectomy, I just ask that you do your own research and just know that you may be among that small portion of women like I was that does pretty much immediately go into menopause. And is that something you want to deal with? And, um, you know, are you in a place in your life where going through those symptoms of menopause is something that you're prepared to handle? Because I'll tell you, I don't think God designed women to go through menopause with little kids at home. I think my kids are supposed to be like high school and self-sufficient or maybe even out of the house before I go through menopause. So I don't think this is part of the grand design and it's been incredibly difficult. So um, just ask a lot of questions, do your own research, make sure that that hysterectomy is what you actually need. Um, in many cases, pelvic organ prolapse can be repaired by leaving those female reproductive organs in place. It just requires more 
native tissue repair or tacking things up in there. Um, maybe you can't lift as much after your surgery. Maybe you're limited on running, jogging. I don't know. And you know, every case is different. But uh, I'm just not sure what I would have done if I would have known. If I could have had a like a crystal ball to see into the next few years after my surgery. I don't know that I would have proceeded with the hysterectomy. And I just wish that all of the information had been shared with me or I had had the knowledge and the time to do more of my own research. I really just was miserable from the prolapses, had a three-month-old baby who also had some significant health challenges. I was tired. I was, um, oh my gosh, what's the word? Uh, I had postpartum him, you know, hormone issues, like just... Oh, it was a lot. And basically I just was tired and was like, okay, whatever you say, let's just do it. Let's, let's fix it and move forward. But, um, I just encourage you to reconsider. Um, if you are going through some of the things I'm saying, maybe you've already had your surgery, maybe you've had your hysterectomy and you are feeling like crap. Don't just believe that because your ovaries were left intact, it can't possibly be hormone issues. That it can't possibly be that you are facing perimenopause, early onset menopause, ovarian failure, because it very well can. The uterus is the hub of that reproductive system. And when it is taken out, it changes the blood flow. And in many cases, it almost cuts off blood flow to those ovaries and they basically shrivel up and die. They stop doing what they're supposed to do. I didn't know that. Nobody told me that, but I've learned it since. So you very well could be having hormone issues. Um, ah, gosh, I could make a whole video about, you know, the way to go about knowing that and blood tests aren't always the answer. And even if your blood test looks normal, um, if you're feeling terrible, you need to press harder and find a doctor that realizes that blood testing is not the way to diagnose a hormone deficiency necessarily for a lot of reasons. Um, also I've mentioned it in a few videos. You need to do your own research, but you should not N O T be afraid of hormone replacement therapy. Many women are misinformed. There are even doctors who are still misinformed and are believing information from a flawed world health organization study that came out in 2001 about how hormone therapy causes breast cancer. First of all, it was a flawed study. It's inaccurate. That is not correct. Second, one in two women in the United States who is after the age of menopause is dying, having a heart attack because of not having estrogen replacement. Guess how many women die of breast cancer? I understand it's a huge risk. I understand it's a terrible disease. One in 20 two, three, I've read both. One in 22 women are dying of breast cancer. One in two, 50% of women are having a heart attack and dying. So you need to be more concerned about heart disease, dementia, osteoporosis, those things that I mentioned that the risks of can be mitigated through hormone replacement therapy. Yes, it needs to be done right. Yes, if you're using a lotion, it needs to be applied appropriately and not near the breasts. But the risk of breast cancer from hormone replacement therapy is so very, very, very low. And a good doctor who has done their research and is up to date on hormones and the role they play in women and the importance of not only helping you get through menopause symptoms by giving you therapy, but also in your remainder of your life, your longevity in preventing those three major diseases, complications, it's critical. You need hormone replacement therapy within that first five to 10 years of your hormones starting to shut down, five to 10 years of that menopause period. That is when it is most critical for preventing you facing those three issues going forward in the future. So big takeaways. Um, just reconsider hysterectomy. I know sometimes women are like, I'm done having babies. I don't want, I don't want a period anymore. It's just such a pain. Yep. Get them out. Take it out. Just know, gosh, if you're young, if you're not even 40, if you're barely 40, you got another 10 years where your ovaries are probably going to keep doing their job and you're not going to end up in ovarian failure and facing a lot of the hormone symptoms that I am with younger kids at home. So I think it might be worth reconsidering. 
if you are feeling some of those terrible symptoms because like me, you already made the decision to have the hysterectomy and maybe it wasn't the right decision or you were too young, get yourself help and do not stop looking for help if the original doctor you go to, whether that's family practice, gyno, endocrinology, whatever, dismisses you when you complain about the symptoms that very well be very well could be related to your ovaries no longer functioning and you being in a hormone depletion state. So um, check out my other videos. I will link my hormone videos here. I think that's probably most important. You can also find some other videos below in the description box and you can just um, check out any of the other videos on my channel for information about pelvic organ prolapse, the surgery I had to treat it, the recovery and the symptoms that I had afterward, and then how I ended up on this hormone journey. Um, I've said in my last few videos, please subscribe, like, comment, all of those things, not because it's benefiting me, but because it is um, increasing the exposure of this channel to other women, helping them find the content, and I've just been blown away from the number of women that this is helping. So, I will keep making videos as long as I have relevant topics like this that's been on my mind for a while. And you guys just help everybody else find it. Thank you.